liquid gold. Call it what you like. Britain now has oil, billions and billions of barrels of it, and has been quietly lapping at the doorstep all the time. When the North Sea first yielded its fabulous secrets in the early 60s, no one quite realised the extent of the discovery, nor did they envisage what vast changes the coming of oil would bring. Aberdeen on the east coast of Scotland, one of the frontier towns facing the new Klondike, faces also an enigmatic future. For centuries, Aberdonians have turned to the sea for sustenance, not without success. The sea has been generous. Generally, the fishing has been good, and they've prospered. But almost overnight, the signs have changed. Aberdeen has suddenly turned into a boom town. Thinking has changed, priorities have shifted. The centuries-old smell of fish that impregnated the dockside now has the sharp eddy tang of oil. Aberdeen shipping, too, has a different profile. Where before they danced attendance on the cod and the herring, now the new gods are the towering oil rigs. Drilling platforms are repaired, new ones are born. And no time is lost in setting the husky young newcomer to work. This is Greythorpe One settling down. Everything about a rig is strictly functional, from the spindle legs buried in the seabed to the drilling platform. On the Alpha rig in Britain's first major oil field, the 40s, the new elite drop in. Big money attracts these modern prospectors like steel chips to a magnet. They come from all walks of life. The work is hard and constant with a great sense of urgency about it. The drill burrows down out of sight, day in, day out, like a tireless ferret hunting against the clock. Hard work, big money, no time for chit-chat. But the incredible rapidity with which British technicians in all sectors of the oil industry have developed this huge North Sea wealth is almost as miraculous as the discovery of the oil itself. And still the giants come. Cost of the jackets, as the rigs are called, is astronomical starting at around four million pounds for BP's original rig, Sequest. 20,000 tons in weight, they're designed to withstand waves of 94 feet, winds of 103 miles an hour. Meanwhile, in Alpha's control room, life takes on the air of science fiction, except that this is science fact. In order to work hard, the men must eat well. Alpha's kitchens are modernly equipped. Menus are carefully contrived, and there's plenty of what you fancy. The quality is as good as in most top hotels. Constantly in touch with the outside world, the radio room. Radio is the only link with the shore and other rigs, except for the ferrying helicopter.
It's hard to believe that British Petroleum's 40s field was unknown only five years ago. Yet by early 1976, production will reach 12 and a half million tonnes a year. Pipeline from the rig makes a landfall at Cruden Bay, Aberdeenshire. From Cruden Bay, it's to carry its precious cargo south for 127 miles to the refinery at Grangemouth. Great care has been taken in planning the pipeline and refineries to protect the environment. Indeed, this has been a major consideration from the moment the hunt for oil began. The oil is light and has a low sulphur content, providing a high yield of petroleum. It's ideal for export. The happy ending to the search for oil off Britain's shores is in reality a happy beginning. Exactly five years and 14 days since Sequest first struck that black lake 7,000 feet below sea level, Her Majesty the Queen comes to Dice near Aberdeen to start Britain's first flow of oil on its way south to the Grangemouth refinery. In the control room, Her Majesty almost casually presses the button. And Britain's home oil industry is in business. The computer screen tracks the flow of the oil. After seeing the oil on its way, Her Majesty unveils a commemorative plaque. Today's ceremony, though mainly symbolic, may be of more significance to the future of the United Kingdom than most Britons realize. And there it goes, pouring into the BP Grangemouth refinery. It has been estimated that 3% of the world's oil reserves lie beneath the North Sea. All these years, Britain has been sitting beside a fabulous industrial treasure trove. But now ceremony is over, production begins in earnest. And the continuing search for new fields could bring even greater prosperity. Black gold, call it what you will, Great Britain has struck it rich.